product lines. Uh, if you have any questions, I believe there's a provision you can type them in, and um, at the end of the uh, the, the webinar, we'll we'll go through some of the questions. Just to give you an overview as a start for Bilco, the company was founded in 1926 as a manufacturer of specialty access solutions. The company started with our basement door, which really doesn't get a lot of use in, in your part of the country. But um, in the, uh, the 20s, uh, George Lyons, the gentleman that founded the company, was a miscellaneous metal worker. And he did a lot of like wrought iron fire escapes and things like that. And um, our part of the country has a lot of uh, you know Wizard of Oz type basement door access into the uh, you know the basement. So he had people come to him and ask them to you know build a steel door for them to replace their wooden doors that were rotting and whatnot. And the little cottage industry was born. And in the uh, the 40s, the company started to branch into the the commercial side of the uh, construction market. Uh, with some of our roof hatches and then our sister products, uh, the fire vents, and then added the uh, underground vault access doors later in the 40s. And uh, that helped us deal with some of the cyclical nature of residential construction. And you know, then, then the company really kind of took off from there to the point that our, our commercial business is probably 85% of our business today. We have a worldwide network of reps and distributors and, and direct sales offices, which I'll touch on in a subsequent slide. And the company had been privately held, owned by the Lyons family, up until June of last year when Bilco was acquired by a company called Ainsbury Truth, who is the, uh, the U.S.'s largest manufacturer of door and window uh, components. They sell to the uh, the OEM market. They're they're not a you know a recognized name in the uh, architectural or commercial marketplace, but I think they have a thing that everything every house built since like 1940, 95% um, of the houses I should say built since 1940 have some of their uh, door and window components in them, and they view Bilco as a um, kind of a platform to help them expand into the, the commercial market going forward. So, uh, you know, six months in, we've been excited about it. It's been a good fit for us. In terms of uh, how we're situated, our headquarters is in New Haven, Connecticut. We've got manufacturing and warehouses in, in Truman, Arkansas, just outside of Memphis, and Santa Teresa, New Mexico, which we service the West Coast from. And then we have representation in, in all the major U.S. markets. We've got about 50 commercial reps across the country that uh, represent Bilco, in, including Premier in, in North Carolina. We also have a couple of direct offices. We've got direct offices in uh, London, Ontario for the Canadian market, outside of London in uh, the U.K. for the European market. We also have an office in, uh, in, in Mexico that, that oversees Latin America for us. And then we also have uh, factory trained distributors or reps, depending on the market in all the various areas that we've noted there, other parts of Latin America, Far East, Middle East. So almost no matter where you are in the world, there's an opportunity to deal with a factory trained Bilco person on, uh, on, on products that can be uh, used for specialty access solutions. We'll focus on our, our main three product lines uh, this morning which are our automatic smoke vents, our roof access hatches, and then I'll touch on our floor and vault doors, which provide underground access. Roof hatches are available in five standard sizes, which you can see here. And basically, the, uh, the selection of the product is just dictated by how somebody's going to access the roof, whether it's through a ladder access, uh, one of the hatches that you see on the, the right side of the screen, or something, uh, you know, might be a traditional stairwell, as you see in the, uh, the center picture. All of our roof hatches are counterbalanced with fully enclosed compression springs, which you see in the top left, to ensure that the, uh, the covers open and enclose smoothly and safely. The last thing we want is somebody to, you know, get knocked off on a ladder dealing with a, with a you know, a, a cover that could be too heavy. So what we do is we determine the weight of the spring load that's required to counterbalance the, the, the cover on a given hatch. And then we have a series of springs, which are basically just the big brothers of the typical spring you'd see almost like in a ballpoint pen. And we inventory a number of different springs in different diameters and different lengths, and we can combine them 
and that gives us the flexibility to provide the spring load that we need to counterbalance a given cover. We also have uh, interior and exterior padlock hasps on all the, uh, the hatches as a standard feature that we can put different locks on them if the application warrants it. The covers have a hold open on the locks when the cover reaches the upright position. We've got an adhered EPDM gasket that seals out weather between the cover and the top of the curb. And then we have pencil hinges, which basically just distribute the load uh, between the cover and the, and the curb and allow the, uh, the cover to rotate smoothly when the cover is open and closed. All of our roofing products also incorporate our bill clip uh, flashing system, which are basically tabs that are just stamped six inches on center in the cap flashing to facilitate a, a way to terminate single ply roofing. Um, if it's not a single ply roof, the tabs don't have to be used, but it just provides a effective mechanical way to terminate single ply roofing because it's, it's as prevalent as it is. It's something when we introduced this probably 15 years ago, we, we took it around to all the leading single ply people and got it as an approved as an installation method. So it's something that uh, the architectural community likes because they can be assured that there's a, you know, an effective approved termination method uh, when single ply is put up under the cap flashing. It's not adhered, it's, you know, it's not something that could you know, potentially break down. It's mechanically attached to hold it in place. We can also do um, hatches in a wide range of custom sizes. This is one of the things that, that Bilko is truly known for. You know, we have our standard products so people know, but we like to consider ourselves as a resource for people when they need that unique uh, hatch that's either a custom size or has a different custom modification. Um, the unit on the left is just a uh, hatch that it's a larger size hatch, one of our SS special size hatches that go over a stairwell. You can also do double leaf roof hatches, as you see on the right. Those are typically used for equipment access to uh, provide uh, a means of lowering or, or raising raw materials into a factory application. We've also had them be used where people might have, uh, you know, air conditioning or heating equipment that's uh, installed on the top floor of a building. So a lot of different uses, but we can also do double leaf hatches in, in whatever custom size might be required. In terms of uh, material construction, our, you know, the most common hatch we sell is a galvanized roof hatch where the cover and curb are both galvanized. We can also provide a hatch that's all aluminum, and then we also have a hatch that would have a steel curb and an aluminum cover. Uh, that may be where a situation where somebody has a um, uh, steel roof deck and they want to weld the, uh, the curb to it, so they want a, um, a, a steel curb. When we get into larger sizes, we prefer to go to aluminum covers. It just gives us more flexibility because the aluminum is a little bit lighter and um, you know, we can build larger units with aluminum covers. We also have the availability to uh, fabricate units out of stainless steel and copper for historic applications uh, if, if required. Our standard uh, roof patch finishes, all the steel units come with a red oxide primer and the aluminum units come with a mill finish, which basically means we just don't do anything to it. It's just how we, we receive it from our, our suppliers. We also have another hatch that I want to make you aware of called our Versamount hatch. This is something that we initially developed for the international market where they're not as uh, standardized on, on hatch sizes as we are in the United States. 90% of the hatches we sell in the U.S. are ladder access um, um, three foot by two foot six. Um, this hatch is designed so it'll take in different variations and roof openings to allow people to use a standard hatch in a, you know, what could be a, a non-standard opening at a lower profile. As you can see here, if you've got an existing curb, whether it's made from concrete or, or wood or something like that, this hatch just affords you a little bit more flexibility to um, allow you to put the this type of product in. In the U.S., where we've seen the biggest opportunity for it is people use it to uh, go on an existing roof curb. They may have an old roof hatch that, uh, whether it's Bilco or another manufacturer, that it might be old. It um, you know may need to be you know partially replaced. But they have a situation where maybe they do you know re-roof the the building within the last year or two. They don't want to uh, you know. Um, you know, poke the bear, nothing's leaking, so they don't necessarily want to have to tear the curb out. 
if the curb is still structurally sound, they can take the cover off and all the hardware and then just mount this unit down right on top of it and, and attach it. Something the architectural, or excuse me, the roofing consultant uh, market likes because it's a, a quick fix which uh, you know doesn't impact the, the, the seal or integrity that's provided by the roof, assuming that it's not you know, leaking right now. Another new product that we have is our thermally broken roof hatch. This is something that we introduced about a year ago. It's our new standard product in the European market, and we brought it over here to kind of be our, our product for uh, green or more energy efficient applications. Um, previously, we had a hatch that we called the, the thermally enhanced, which had two inches of poly ISO. This unit uh, goes beyond that with uh, three inches of poly ISO plus some other features. Right now, it's only available in uh, single leaf sizes because of the, the nature of the, the, the thermal break design. Uh, we can still provide uh, the old style thermally enhanced, the unit that has two inches of poly uh, ISO if uh, somebody needs it where there's a reason, particularly a double leaf unit or a, um, a modification that impacts the uh, the thermal break and prevents us from using it in, in, on that particular project. So we do have different options for, you know, quote unquote green construction. The whole theory that, you know, we take to this is, you know, a Bilco hatch doesn't push somebody from, you know, lead silver to lead gold. But typically a designer is working on building a more energy efficient building. And they have a list of products that they consider to be more energy efficient and we want to be on that list. And it's, it's, you know, it's obviously a, a specified product, but we are seeing, you know, um, definite, uh, you know, growing use of the product and specifications and, and certainly in orders. Uh, some of the unique things about it is because of the thermal uh, break that's in the cover and the curb, we minimize heat transfer between the interior and exterior, and it basically um, mitigates the potential for, for condensation. Uh, developing whether you have a uh, you know an air conditioned space in the south and you have uh, hot you know summer uh, you know uh, beating down on top of it or you have a uh, you know a heated space in say a northern part of the country and you've got snow building up on it this type of product will you know virtually eliminate the potential for for condensation to drip down into the building it's um, as a provision of its the testing that it underwent in, in Europe got superior wind resistance and air infiltration, and in a side benefit, it also has kind of a, a acoustic performance that, um, you know, is better than our, our, our standard roof hatches, largely just the byproduct of the additional insulation. And these products have the, the TB suffix on them, so if you see something called out, you know, whether it's an S50 TB or an L50 TB, if you're familiar with our, our nomenclature, the TB signifies thermally broken. As I mentioned, it's got the thermally broken frame and cover, the, the three inches of poly ISO. It's all aluminum. It has a two-part gasket system, um, the, you know, as part of the design. And we also uh, have a Santa Prime coated exterior handle. It's not the typical steel handle you may be used to. We uh, we have it coated just to, you know, mitigate that uh, transfer of, of hot and cold from, you know, one side of the cover to the uh, the other side. Most of the um, different modifications that we can provide on Bilco hatches are available on the thermally broken unit, with, with a few exceptions. We can do curb liners and fully enclosed curves. We can do most of the different uh, lock options and, and finishes that we can do. We can provide motorized operation. Really, the, the only thing that we can't do is provide the unit with an anodized finish, and that's really because the uh, the anodizing um, and then the temperature of the anodizing impacts the, um, the 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 material that provides the thermal break, and uh, I think it, it, it has like a melting effect on it, so we can't anodize it. But we can do other things like powder coating and whatnot, which I'll, I'll touch on in a second. Unit was uh, designed by our engineering department uh, using a you know thermal analysis. Um, you know we did some different uh, heat loss testing on it, had it tested in the UK, and um, you know basically we we marketed as a product which has uh, you know R18 insulation value. I mentioned earlier some of the different finishes that we can provide. Bilco within the last year and a half went out and got a powder coat oven at our factory in Truman, Arkansas, outside of Memphis. So we now have the capability 
opportunity of doing in-house powder coating. We've got four standard colors that we offer, uh, you know, the white, the gray brown, which is kind of like an architectural bronze, uh, black and, and, and zinc yellow, which is more like a safety yellow. And we can also do other colors. We just need to, you know, know how it's uh, specified by its uh, RAL color. In terms of some of the unique applications that we can provide with our, our roof hatches, these are just some different things we've done across the country in, uh, in recent years. For those of you that have been to uh, Walt Disney World and, and specifically Epcot, Wilco designed all the, uh, the hatches that protect their lasers that uh, they use to do their nightly um, laser show over the lake. Uh, there's probably 12 or 15 of them. We designed these hatches eh, maybe, maybe 10 years ago. They, uh, they had some other kind of sheet metal structures that were falling apart and leaking and whatnot. So we, they came to us and then we built these uh, hatches. The only thing that's really unique about them is they have uh, anywhere from like a 40 to a 56 inch high curb to uh, house the laser. And we have louvers in the side of it and for, you know, just to ventilate some of the heat from the uh, lasers. And then we have a special glass panel on the front side that they actually project the laser through when we're doing you know, the light show. And another thing that's uh, a unique product that we do is we have hatches that we uh, provide for uh, hospital and medical facilities that have MRI machines. Due to the large size of MRI equipment, it's typically on the, the ground floor of a building or the, the top floor. It's, it's rarely on an intermediate floor because they just don't have any way to transport it. When it's installed on the top floor, uh, we provide a large uh, aluminum hatch with, with stainless steel hardware and make it as non-magnetic as possible. And it, typically what the GE and Hitachi, a couple of large MRI manufacturers do is just incorporate a, uh, in their specification uh, the need for a, uh, a Bilco hatch to allow them to get it in or take it out in the event that it has to be serviced. A couple other unique things that we've done uh, with more frequency. While most of our products are, are commercial in nature, we have seen a, uh, a rise in the use of domed roof hatches to get access in like townhouses and row houses in uh, urban areas to get uh, access to like a rooftop deck or patio or something like that. This is actually a, a hatch that we did uh, for a, a gentleman in, uh, in Georgetown in Washington, D.C. that had a really nice rooftop deck. He's got his uh, stairwell coming up. We've got a, uh, a large uh, domed roof hatch on it so he gets the functionality of a skylight when, when the hatch is closed. It's uh, motorized so we can push a button the hatch will open up. Uh, kind of unique, and when we do dome units, all of our domes are uh, polycarbonate, so they meet all the uh, fall protection uh, requirements, so there's no need to have to put a cage over it or anything like that. This is another uh, rooftop access. This is a, a project we did in Seattle where they've got the stairwell coming up. They didn't have to go with a domed hatch in this particular case. They just went with a, uh, a traditional uh, aluminum hatch, but again, kind of a cool application. Another unique project that we've done, we've actually done this a couple of times where we've designed units to go on the peak of uh, shopping malls. This particular project was at the Cherry Creek Mall in Denver and they had some uh, large lights that they uh, used to illuminate the, uh, the kind of like an atrium setting, the shopping floor down below. And in the event that one of the lights, you know, burned out and had to be changed, they didn't want to have to bring in scaffolding or some kind of lift to go up and change it. They just wanted to be able to go up and onto the roof to access it. So we designed this hatch for them, which is basically almost like a series of hatches spliced together. Uh, it's actually, if you see in the bottom right picture, it's three different units that get pieced together, kind of like a puzzle. It's designed to go right on the, the peak of the roof. And within um, each section, there's a couple of little autonomous hatches that allow them to open the hatch, pivot the light out, change the bulb, and, and pivot it back down. And then in the center, you can see there's a little square. They had some kind of flagpole or some kind of stanchion that actually came through that. But again, another unique uh, solution that we provided to somebody that had kind of a, you know, a specialized access application for the roof area. 
Another thing that we do are very large units. This is a particular unit that we did on the uh, the Knights of Columbus building in uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. It's about a 10-story building. They had uh, their HVAC equipment located on the top floor of the building, wasn't on the roof. So what they had to do is they needed a large hatch to you know get it into the building. So we built this 12 by 12 hatch for them. Basically, it's spliced and we ship it in two pieces. And the um, you know they actually had to helicopter it up onto the roof to get it installed in place. And if, if you look in the the top right photo, you can see all the uh, gold from compression spraying tubes there. And as I mentioned earlier, what we do is you know we'll determine how much spring force is required to counterbalance the cover, and you know a hatch this big can be made to operate as easily as you know a hatch that's three foot by three foot. So you know one of the hallmarks of all of our products is, is you know inherent to the design is smooth, safe operation for the you know the person that's opening and closing the uh, the hatch. Another unique thing that we did. Uh, you know, going back, uh, we've done some hatches that go over the controls for anti-ballistic missile silos in Alaska. Just kind of a cool application. You can see the uh, the, the Bilko hatch in the front with uh, one of these uh, these missile silos uh, that's located there. On the surface, you might think these you know there should be some security around these photos and. That's what we thought until we found them in the public domain on the internet. So we were able to find some pictures of our photos for really kind of a cool application. There's just another shot with them actually load, uh, loading one of the missiles into the silo. You can see the uh, the Bilko hatch under the, the arrow on the right side of the photo. Kind of a really cool picture with the mountains and everything in the background. A couple other unique things that we've done. We've done hatches on, on slate roofs. This is a project our UK office did in Scotland. Here's another one with a uh, another slate roof. Um, just some different special D units. Again, you can see some equipment being loaded in into a manufacturing environment. And we've also done uh, hatches that were designed to receive tile on them to allow them to kind of blend in with the aesthetics. Now we've got some limitations in, in doing this, but when we do a hatch like this, we would just need to know. Uh, you know what the, the material is going to be that somebody wants to put on top of it, so we can factor, factor the weight of that material into our spring calculations. So when we build the unit and ship it out, it would you know be oversprung until somebody put the uh, the appropriate fill material on top. Once they did, the, the hatch would be counterbalanced, just like you know one of our normal hatches that didn't receive anything on top. Just another unique application. Switch gears a little bit and talk about one of our accessory products. This is our, our Billguard uh, 2.0, our new hatch rail system, something we've come out with in the last year. Uh, we basically are replacing the previous fiberglass model with a, with a new aluminum construction. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's a lot of enhancements just to make it a little bit uh, stronger. Um, you know, one of the things we found with the, with the fiberglass design was the the product is designed for fall protection when somebody's on the roof, but the reality of the situation was many people were using it as a grab bar and pulling themselves up when they were, uh, you know, coming up onto the roof. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that necessitated that we, you know, we beef it up a little bit. So we've got some new corner pieces, everything set with uh, set screws, real heavy-duty uh, approach. We've got a yellow powder coat finish on it. It's a standard. We can do different colors uh, if if. We're Required and, and the volume is there. The product's got some some new uh, new hinge design, uh, some stainless steel spring spring hinges, which you can see there, which basically close the gate automatically. Uh, it doesn't do any good to uh, have a rail system and then have somebody uh, you know not secure a gate. Uh, so that it basically closes like a saloon door behind somebody when they uh, you know enter onto the roof area. It also has a uh, a new aluminum and stainless latch mechanism. That secures the gate in the uh, the closed position. This is the exterior. Somebody basically just flips the little uh, lever, thumb lever, to open it. And then if they're coming up from the uh, the ladder, there's a uh, spring-loaded uh, push bar that they push to disengage the uh, latch to allow them to open the gate. 
we also tweaked it a little bit. We've got some uh, some new teardrop shaped brackets that mount onto the cab flashing, and we punch holes on all Bilco units to facilitate easier installation. And these uh, new brackets basically have a compression property to them to, that allow it to really grab onto the aluminum tubing to uh, make it very rigid and secure. Another accessory product we have is our ladder up safety post. This is something that mounts on the top two rungs of a ladder, whether it's a ladder to access a roof area or to go underground into a vault or manhole. Basically, it, it, it's got um, a unistrut uh, feature on it and um, spring-loaded uh, nuts that allow you to uh, adjust the brackets to fit different uh, spacing between rungs. When it's installed, it's got a, a constant force spring on it, so it only goes up or down as you raise or lower it. And um, when you raise it, it reaches its fully uh, upright position, and then it locks. So now you have a firm handhold to, you know, exit from a ladder onto a roof. Or what I always find to be, you know, the, the best feature of it is when you're up on the roof and you're, you know, you're kind of trying to dangle your foot down to find out just where that top rung is and doing that little dance. It just gives you the, you know, the, the feeling as if the ladder extended through the opening, so you can descend or ascend in a, in a safe, upright position. And it's available in four different models. We have a yellow powder coat, we have hot dip galvanized, we've got stainless steel, and we have aluminum. So it's just a simple accessory, but it makes it very much more safe to, uh, to get up on a roof. Now we'll go over to uh, one of our, um, our sister products to the roof hatches, which are automatic uh, fire vents, smoke vents. Very similar in construction to the roof hatches, but these products are designed to open up automatically in the event of a fire. They're fusible and actuated. So the, in the event of a fire, um, they pop open. Typically, you, you think of a fire situation, one of the first things um, you know, a fire crew does when they get on the scene is they're prepared to chop holes in the roof because they want to get the, uh, the toxic gases out of the building to make it safer for the uh, firemen to go in and fight the fire. At the same time, they want to get, you know, the superheated gases that are highly explosive, depending on, you know, what's in the building and, and what the, the properties of the fire are out of the building. So, you know, they're prepared to do that with, you know, with a, with a smoke vent that eliminates the need. It pops up automatically, and that it allows the, you know, the firemen to identify, you know, where in the building, you know, the, the fire is, and allows them to, uh, you know, more strategically attack the fire. We have smoke vents in, available in a number of different models. We've got acoustical smoke vents that have sound in, extra insulation for sound attenuation. We've got um, our, our, that's our ACDSH. We have our SV, which is just a smaller uh, single leaf smoke vent to vent smaller areas. We have our Luma vent, which I'll touch on in a second, which has the properties of a skylight. And then, you know, the, hat, the smoke vent that we sell the most of a metal covered unit is our, our DSH. And this is the product that we typically sell into schools and manufactured environments and things like that. The, uh, the DSH is available in the 12 standard UL sizes. We can also do it in custom sizes, but uh, unlike the smoke vent product line, most, uh, excuse me, unlike the roof hatch product line, most smoke vents are um, you know, tend to gravitate around more standard sizes. So we do have those in a variety of different sizes. They can be fabricated in all galvanized steel, aluminum covers and steel curves are all aluminum. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, the most common applications would be, you know, a manufacturing facility or an educational facility. Then we have our, our Luma vent, which is a smoke vent that gives you the functionality of the skylight, allowing light to come in, as well as the, uh, you know, the ability to pop open automatically and vent uh, smoke in the event of a fire. These units also incorporate the polycarbonate material in them to address all the fall protection. And the, uh, the slope design that, that, that we utilize also meets the, um, you know, the current International Building Code requirements. Um, 2610.3, which dictate you have to have a certain pitch on your, uh, your, you know, your glazed covers to allow a burning ember from an adjacent building that might hit it to, to roll off 
don't exactly know how they've come up with the calculation, but there's a certain pitch that has to be on the units, and these units uh, provide that. And again, you know, these might be used in manufacturing or, or warehouses where somebody wants to, uh, you know, take advantage of natural lighting and, uh, you know, kind of as an energy savings means and, and reduce the amount of light they have to have inside the, uh, the facility. Can also do uh, acoustical smoke vents, which I, I touched on a little bit earlier. These units have extra insulation in them. They uh, have a, they've been tested, they have an STC rating of, of 46. These are typically used in areas where somebody wants to keep outside noise from getting into a building. Commonly used in theaters and auditoriums and performing arts centers, at casinos. A lot of higher education facilities use these. Um, so again, another unique product that we have uh, an offering. And then our, we have our single leaf smoke vents, our SVs. These are just areas that are used in areas when they need a, a small space ventilated, most commonly used in stairwells, in you know, apartment buildings or office buildings, uh, dormitories, as well as elevator shafts. A number of states across the country require a uh, small smoke vent at the top of the elevator shaft. Um, in, in the state of Connecticut and in, in New York, as an example, we actually have units that we put louvers in the curves and expanded metal um, uh, grates inside them uh, per the, the building code because the picture is a uh, elevator car goes up and down. It's almost like a syringe pulling and pushing air. So they want to have uh, you know a means for that air to uh, to escape, and that's why we put the louvers in there. And then the expanded metal allows a uh, firefighter to stand over the opening and shoot a stream of water down uh, in the event of a fire in, in the elevator shaft. Again, we can do the, uh, the same powder coat uh, options that we have on the, uh, the roof hatches, on the smoke vents. And some other unique things that we can do with our smoke vents is we can put heating cables in the covers. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, part of the UL test protocol is that the units have to open up against a 10 PSF snow load. Obviously, you can get parts of the country, you know, most notably uh, ski resorts and whatnot, that they may get a lot more than, you know, 10 uh, PSF uh, of snow on top of the, uh, the units. So we can modify the covers with heating cables in them that are tied in with uh, snow sensors and, uh, and temperature gauges. So when the temperature reaches a certain point and moisture is detected, the covers heat up and they just prevent any, uh, any snow from building up on the covers. We can also do this on our, our roof hatches. It's, it's more common with our smoke vents. We can also modify our, our smoke vents to open um, when an explosive force between uh, 20 and 25 pounds reaches the underside of the cover, so they pop up automatically. And then we can also combine the two, so we have a, a vent that opens up in the event of a, a fire where heat melts the fusible link or an explosive force pops the covers. So again, a lot of different varieties of uh, different releases that we can provide on our, on our smoke vent line. Another thing that we do pretty commonly with our smoke vents is vent very, very large areas. This is a project that we did at the uh, University of Akron a couple of summers ago where they had a large uh, ventilation structure that was very old and leaking. It was, you know, maybe six or eight feet high. It had all these louvers and whatnot built into it. And we, they basically took that out and we provided them a, um, a, a multi-component smoke vent. You can see this particular unit is made up of 20 different um, Bilco smoke vents, basically five across and four deep, that all piece together almost like puzzle pieces, uh, and they bolt together in the field to, to allow the uh, a large area to be vented. Customer obviously had to provide some structural steel underneath to you know, give support to the units, but we basically gave them you know, one large solution for the, the big opening that they had to provide the, uh, the needed uh, smoke venting on the project. Another thing we can do, uh, you know, here's a, a domed unit, and this particular unit has uh, louvers, as I mentioned earlier, in it to get uh, get air in and out of the unit. There's another multi-cover unit that we did, uh, GM facility in, in, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, particular six-covered unit that was uh, venting a very large area. 
We also did some units on this job that were about 80 feet long where we just pieced together a very large run of uh, smoke vents and that was over their, uh, their manufacturing floor where, they, uh, where General Motors makes the Silverado pickup truck. With a view of the, the roof of some of these big uh, smoke vents on it at GM. This is a uh, stainless steel acoustical smoke vent that we recently did on a project in Hong Kong. Uh, we don't do stainless steel very often because of the, uh, the cost, but uh, it's a very unique job. The units, uh, you can see the inset photo, it kind of looks like they're on a radius. We built the units as rectangles and then they, they kind of oriented them in the field to, to give the impression of the units being installed on a radius. Just kind of a you know, high profile project. This is another unique smoke vent that we did. This is at the uh, Cliffs of Moore in Ireland. And there they had an underground visitor's center and they needed to provide some type of uh, smoke relief in it. Uh, for security purposes, they wanted the unit to blend into the countryside. So we modified the smoke vent to uh, have a pan for a cover and this allowed them to put sod in it and you know when when the, when the grass came in it basically blended in invisibly into the uh, into the countryside so uh, you know aesthetically it, it gave them the the look that they wanted the security that they wanted and also the performance they needed in the event of a uh, ever fire within the, uh, the structure now we'll move over to our, our last product group which are our floor and vault doors and these are doors that uh, we can manufacture out of aluminum or steel or stainless steel. They can provide, be provided with uh, drainage provisions where water can collect and be piped away or you know, non-drainage where any water that comes on the surface of the door goes right through. Available in a wide variety of standard and special sizes. And we have a, a large number of different models with different features, which I'll, I'll just run through real quickly. But, Product line is, is pretty large, which you can see there. Um, you know, there's there's 10 different models of floor doors that we have, and all these are in a, available in a, in a wide range of standard sizes as well as custom sizes. You know, kind of the most common floor door that we sell is our JAL door. This is an all aluminum door. Um, it's got a 25-year warranty. It's typically used in the water and waste treatment industry or by utilities to provide access to underground uh, pits and pumps and valves and, and things like that. It's got an all stainless steel hardware. It's got a unique frame design where we build some different features into it that allow it to be modified in different ways. We can provide a gasket that you see there that, that minimizes how much uh, debris can fall between the cover and the curb into the channel. We can put a, um, a different odor resistant gasket on it if somebody has it installed in a sewage treatment plant and they want to mitigate uh, you know, any uh, odors that may be developing underneath from escaping through the door. And then we've got a, a unique anchor feature on it, which I'll go through in a second. Basically, the door has all stainless steel hardware. So that's compression springs and tubes, the hold open and guide arms, the locks, all the fasteners. And, and all the hinges, so it's it's a very uh, you know good product to be suited for the you know harsh environment of a uh, sewage or wastewater treatment facility. The uh, the anchor tabs just provide flexibility when somebody uh, is casting the door in the concrete. They can be bent to different angles. They can be moved to different spots just to uh, allow the concrete to grab onto it to to hold the door in place within the uh, the slab. We uh, also make these doors out of steel. When we build the doors out of steel, we use uh, a, an engineered nylon 6-6 uh, composite material for the, uh, for the spring tube assemblies. Same design, just a different uh, you know, housing that we have for the springs. We also manufacture doors that are reinforced for different loading conditions. Uh, we can do doors that are designed for a vehicular loading, in this case an H20 loading for a 16,000 pound wheel load. Those doors basically have a special support shelf that uh, has to be supported in the field typically by concrete. The, uh, the stiffeners that you see there, the channel reinforcing sits on top of that uh, you know, stiffener or excuse me, that uh, support shelf. 
So any load that comes from a vehicle rolling over the door gets transferred through the, the channel reinforcing members to that shelf and then are held in place by you know, concrete underneath it. So that's how we uh, you know, handle the load of the vehicle rolling over it. There's just a, a detail showing that. That's something that's very important when the door is being uh, installed to make sure that uh, that support shelf does have uh, concrete underneath it so it, the, uh, the load can be transferred through that. This is what typically happens when you get a door that's, um, you know, um, not suited for the application. This was a door that uh, was installed in a sidewalk and, you know, a, a truck must have jumped a curb or something and, and rolled over it. So. Uh, they should have gone with some type of uh, H20 application here. We also have the line of uh, non-drainage doors, which basically any water that comes across the top of the door is going to pass through. Uh, it may not be an issue depending on what the application is. So, um, it, you know, it's just another kind of the lower end of the, the food chain for GOCO access doors. And this would be our TK and Q doors, and I'll run through those real quickly. They don't use the same compression springs that we saw earlier. They use a, a series of torsion rods and a cam-shaped hinge to provide the counterbalanced operation. You know, ultimately, the, the, the net result is the same. We just achieve it with a, with a different design. The, uh, the, the type T door is a door that we manufacture that can receive either um, adhesive back tile or carpeting. Typically, it might be used in an office environment or an electrical chase or something like that. And it allows the door to kind of blend in with the, the, the flooring from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, kind of just a, a lighter duty door, 150 PSF loading, and a quarter inch uh, cover. We also have a sister product, which is identical, other than it doesn't have the, uh, the tile molding for the carpet or the adhesive back tile. Just a, you know, kind of a, a door that can be used and commonly used in, in water and waste treatment facilities where there's no concern of a, a need for a heavier load to just pedestrian traffic would be walking over it. And then we have a steel door that's just 150-pound uh, loading, basically an angle frame door. That's, you know, kind of the, the most inexpensive uh, BOCO floor door that we offer. Same functionality from safe operation and whatnot, just kind of a, a down and dirty uh, counterbalance door to provide access through a floor. Then I'm moving up kind of the, the scale a little bit from a, an aesthetic standpoint. We have our type TER door, which is a door that's got a one inch pan and the cover can uh, accommodate a lot of uh, different uh, fill materials. Typically this would be used where somebody wants to maintain the aesthetics of an area that commonly might be in a shopping mall or a hotel lobby where they have a fountain and they need to be able to access the, the valves, let's say, associated with the fountain, but they don't want to, you know, have a piece of checker plate in their, you know, their granite floor, or their marble floor, or whatever it might be. So with this product, they basically just tell us what the fill material is going to be. We design the spring for us to, to counterbalance based on the weight of that fill material, ship the door on outer, over sprung, and then, then when they receive it in the field, the, uh, the fill material can be installed in it, and they have a, a counterbalance door that, you know, blends in pretty well with, with the environment. And I have a couple of shots of that. This is a door where a um, company makes prefabricated wine cellars, and they installed some, uh, some slate or bluestone in the, uh, the, the top of the covers, kind of a neat application. Here's another one, you know, the typical shopping mall situation where you've got the, the fountain and um, our doors go over, you know, the valves associated with, with the uh, controlling the water in the fountain. And this is another one where somebody basically installed an entrance mat at the front of a retail uh, outlet to uh, just, you know, catch dirt and whatnot as people enter into the store. So, you know, a lot of different um, varieties of uh, fill material can be used. You know, I saw a couple of them here. We've had people put, you know, wood in them, install them in decks, so just a lot of different applications. So a very flexible door, but, that, you know, with a high aesthetic upside. Bilco also is the only manufacturer of a UL-listed fire-rated door. This is a door that's designed to go into a two-hour floor ceiling assembly. 
It carries a two-hour UL listing, uh, tested in accordance with ASTM E119 or NSPA 251. It's also available with a separate UL listed self-closing device that's fusible link actuated. Um, the this typical product is installed with the self-closing device, which has a pneumatic cartridge. In the event uh, somebody leaves the door open um, and you know, say it goes to lunch and a fire breaks out and the fusible ink melts, um, the CO2 cartridge gets uh, punctured and that shoots a charge of air through the, uh, the cylinder and it closes the door automatically. The door is designed where it has an intermessent coating on the underside of it. So when it comes in contact with fire, it expands to help seal out the, uh, the, the heat. And it also is modified with a, uh, a one inch pan in the cover. It's a sister product to our TER door where it has to get a half an inch of concrete in the cover and then they have a half an inch to put whatever fill material they want on top of it from an aesthetic standpoint. But that half inch of concrete is important because we, uh, as the heat comes through the door, the latent water that's still in that concrete can absorb some of that heat and uh, energy and, um, you know, just through an endothermic reaction, dissipate that heat and steam. So very unique product that we do, uh, really nothing like it on the market. A couple other unique things that we have, we have doors that are designed for uh, forklift traffic, uh, our HLC door. Um, we also can have that door installed in the tarmac of, of airports. Uh, it's designed for a really high load situation. We've done a number of uh, emergency evacuation doors for many metro systems across the country. I'll touch on those in a second. Uh, the HLC door is a door that's got a 3 inch diamond plate cover. It's only made in steel and it can handle a load up to 200 uh, PSI with 30% impact. We initially started building these for um, airports when you know planes were parked at tarmac. So, you know they might have water or um, uh, you know compressed air or something that they they need to access to service the aircraft when it's parked at the gate area. But obviously, in the event that the, you know a plane rolls over, it has to be able to withstand that load. And then you know we, we've spun this off and also provided it to different industrial and manufacturing settings where there's forklifts. And you can picture a, a forklift has a, a very concentrated load that gets passed through the very small uh, tires that are on you know, your average forklift. I mentioned earlier we've got our, uh, our type JLR door which is basically a modification with a red bowl gasket that you can see there which basically limits the air infiltration from the underside to the top side of the door. Again, kind of used for odor control in water and waste treatment facilities. Uh, you know, as I alluded to earlier, the most common application for our floor doors is, uh, you know, different types of utility situations, gas and electric to access uh, valves, meters, regulators, uh, water and waste treatment facilities where it might be installed over pumps. We've used them in you know, telecommunication applications, variety of different things where somebody needs, you know, safe, secure access to something that's installed underground. Typical doors just got a, uh, a slam lock, which I've shown here in just a detail, but can also be modified with a lot of different uh, lock options. Uh, most common application is a recessed padlock hasp. We can put cylinder locks in them. We can put McGuard uh, plug locks in, very similar to what you would you know, lock a, a wheel on an automobile with, where you need a, a special socket to open it. We can put uh, padlock lugs. We can put panic hardware on them. We can put, you know, uh, high security locks, you know, Folger Atom, Adtech Southern Steel locks on. We can also put electromagnetic locks. And this kind of applies to virtually all of our, our access products. We can do, you know, a lot of these same applications on our roof hatches as well, just to, uh, to suit whatever type of uh, security concerns somebody may have on a given project. Some other options that we can do, we can provide grading in the covers for ventilation. We uh, galvanize steel doors uh, quite frequently. We can also anodize them. Uh, steel doors can be provided with stainless steel hardware if needed. Different paint finishes. We can do Kynar. We can obviously do the same powder coating uh, that you saw earlier. And we can also provide different uh, types of insulation in the doors uh, where somebody may want it for thermal properties. Again, the powder coating showed you earlier. 
We also manufacture a line of fall protection grading for uh, installation underneath our floor and vault doors. This can be installed at the factory when the door is purchased or it can also be retrofitted after the fact. And these are commonly used in treatment plants where doors are kept open because they may be monitoring the, you know, the level of sludge or something like that uh, within the facility and, and you know, they may have uh, floats or there may be some type of uh, alert, visual alert that you know, they need to kick down another pump or something like that. That uh, basically that grading just provides a, you know, a barrier so somebody that's not paying attention doesn't fall down into the, uh, into the sludge. It comes with a uh, you know a yellow powder coated finish. It's got stainless steel components, uh, stainless steel hinges, and a stainless steel hold open arm that holds the uh, the grating up in the event that somebody needs to access something through the door. Typically, maybe pulling a pump up or something like that. And it's rated. The grating is rated for you know uh, pedestrian load of uh, 300 psf. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it can be installed on you know both new and existing doors. And you know whether the doors are 300 PSF or H20 loading. And this is uh, an example of one of our metro doors. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. These are doors that we fabricated over the years for many of the metro systems in, in the United States and, and across the country really for that matter. And these are doors that provide emergency egress between stations in the event that a uh, a subway car breaks down, and these doors typically weigh upwards of a thousand pounds. There's a, there's a lot of reinforcing in these covers, yet they have to uh, open with no more than 30 pounds of force. So the proverbial little old lady that's you know trapped uh, between stations in the event of an emergency can open one of these doors and, and exit from the uh, subway tunnels up to the, the street level. And we've installed these in uh, Atlanta. This particular door here is in New York City, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, Dallas, Boston, San Francisco, Chicago, Pittsburgh. Virtually uh, every metro system in the United States uh, utilizes these doors for emergency egress. We've also done uh, some international projects. We've sold some in London. We've done some in Singapore. So again, you know, just a, um, a bigger version of um, heavier duty version of, of, of one of our, our vault access doors. And in terms of some of the unique things that, that we've done for our, our vault and sidewalk doors, this is a door that we've done where we've built the uh, entire door cover out of a grating panel, something uh, kind of unique. Um, this is uh, something that we have for, it's called our SM door, which basically is a surface mount door. This is just a simple um, reverse angle frame door that can be mounted over a reservoir or something like that where the door doesn't have to be flush. Just a simple product to provide access. It has a gas strut to open and close it. Um, it's shown with some uh, posts and chains, which you can see there, just to protect the opening to you know, minimize somebody falling through it. It's uh, gasketed. It's got an exterior padlock lugs for security. Just a you know simple door. Some other unique things that we've done. These are some uh, grading doors that we've done for uh, New York City Transit. They have a, uh, a color galvanized finish. They also are accessed through a, a special triangular plug that um, you know the firefighters and security personnel in New York carry to uh, to open and close uh, this particular door. And here's one just installed in a, in, you know, in a sidewalk in, in Manhattan. Here's a door that we did for a uh, transit system in Singapore uh, where they've got some, uh, you know, basically some uh, great railings around it to prevent somebody from, you know, falling in the opening in the event that it's, uh, the door is open while somebody may be down working on something. This is another unique door that we do um, for New York City. This is uh, what we call our, our cage door. These doors are basically installed uh, over areas where they have escalator motors uh, to, to get into the different subway stations. And they have that security shutter on them. And that particular shutter is similar to what you'd see 
uh, when somebody uh, you know might like see it in a shopping mall or in a you know stadium or, or arena over the concessions. You know, after the seventh inning, when they stop selling beer, they typically pull the, something like this down. And basically, this allows this basically opens up like a shutter, allows the uh, the workers to go down into the uh, into the you know the vault or the room down below, close the shutter behind them, so it gives them a safe environment. So if somebody's not going to you know kick a, a, a you know a, a, a bottle of Coke or a coffee cup or something down on top of them while they're working in there. Very unique thing that we do, and that's all mounted on the underside of, of one of our uh, doors. Lastly, basically just kind of want to you know refer you to the Bilco.com website. This is really what we use as the end all be all resource that, you know for different types of information. Um, you know, you can get benefits and features, you can download specifications, submittal drawings, CAD details, BIM models, uh, PDF versions of our literature, installation instructions, different videos. It's really the ultimate resource the way, you know, our business has evolved, you know, over the last decade. This is where, you know, we want people to go. It's the place that you can always be assured of getting, you know, the most up-to-date information on our products. And, uh, you know, we get you know, thousands and thousands of hits every day on, on this uh, on, our, on our website. We're actually um, in the process of updating it as well. I think this is going to be like our, our fifth iteration of our our website. So probably within the next month or two, you'll you'll see it take on a slightly different look. Information will be the same, but we're always trying to upgrade it and make it more uh, user friendly for you know our various audiences to, to use to access. And then you know, lastly, if you have any uh, questions. You know, you can reach out to our, our customer service department at cs at bilco.com or you can always, uh, you know, email me at m2e at bilco.com as well to, uh, to help you, uh, you know, with any questions you may have or any design uh, issues regarding a specific project. And with that, Ted, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. I don't know what kind of questions that we may have, but we've got time for a couple. I'm happy to, uh, to answer them. No, there's no questions. Uh, if anybody ever does have questions, you can read out, reach out to Mike or myself, and we appreciate you joining today. Yeah, we appreciate everybody taking an hour out of their morning. And again, you know, don't hesitate to call us if you have any particular questions. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, thank you, guys.